Brian, you got everybody back who was missing last week pretty much? Fit and strong, they were looking all right. Yeah, not bad. It's been a slow week because a few of them couldn't train to start with, but uh, yeah, it's really good news. A lot of them pull through. It's great. How important to have that experience back in, in a game <coughs> as big as this? Well, it's nice that you've got it. You know, if you were to press me and say, do we, do we need it? I'd, I'm not sure what the answer would be. Uh, Hull, Hull won the Challenge Cup for the first time in a lot of years last year, so you know they didn't have much experience in their team. So uh, I don't know if it's, I think it's an absolute must, but uh, yeah, to have those fellas back, it gives you a bit of confidence. Who do you see as favourites for this game? For this game? Yeah. Hmm. Let me decide. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting one. I think Hull have been very good this year and and are capable and have shown shown enough this year that they're capable of being almost unplayable at times. They've got a really physical team and uh, they carry the ball really strong. And if they want to do and if they decide to do and if, if, if things go well for them on game day, they, they become a really difficult team to beat. Uh, but then I'll say the same about us. We're, uh, we've been great this year. On occasion, it's been very, very good and uh, really looking forward to it. We're in good shape. Is the key to start that first 20 minutes to not let them get a foothold? In most of these games, yeah. I think, I think the first half an hour probably doesn't decide the game, but you know, the first you know, 10, 15 minutes of any game are, uh, are important, but especially in Challenge Cup games. They're a funny thing, Challenge Cup games. Maybe because it's knockout, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because everybody, it's such a short and intense competition. It's not like the season, it's, you know, the grand final, if you get there, is the culmination of 30 league rounds plus playoffs. This is such a short, intense competition and you just don't get any second chances. So maybe because of that, people always look gassed, especially in semi-finals. Everybody just looks tired and it doesn't look like a normal game. Uh, people play it a little bit differently. Execution is not the order of the day, it's sometimes just possession and field position. So, so I think, uh, you know, we're ready for a different type of game. We're, we're ready for an energy sapping type of game. And uh, I think the start in that is key, yeah. Obviously, Rob Burrow is retiring, Danny Maguire moving on. A couple of years ago, when you had a, a similar scenario with, with Jamie Peacock, Kevin Sinfield and, and Kylie, I know you, early on when we found out, you said it wasn't a factor, but as you got nearer these big games, you said there was a discernible sort of emotions, uh, almost something that you can't control, that's nothing to do with you pushing the team on. Are you sensing that with them wanting to give these guys the best possible send-off? And Honestly, right now, no. I, I don't sense that. I think the desire to get through to the Challenge Cup final is enough. I don't think they, they want to do any more because a couple of guys are retiring. Uh, and right here and now, it's not that big a deal. You know, you could talk to those players themselves. You know, I'm sure they'll tell you that, you know, keep it calm. We're all right. We've got a fair ways to go just yet. A lot of, a lot of business to conduct between now and the end of the year. Now I dare say uh, at Wembley, should we get there, if we get there, I dare say that it will have a bearing on the game. I, I dare say it, uh, it may be just bring a, bring a sharp focus to one or two players, but uh, right here and now it, it's not going to have much of a bearing, I don't think. It would be wonderful though, wouldn't it, for the pair of them to get to Wembley? It's, uh, you know, if you could script your own final season, if you could script it, I'm sure they'd have Wembley in there, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I, I know Lee Radford's conscious of this because he keeps mentioning it that uh, we've beaten them for the last two times we've played them. But uh, yeah, I've been in this competition as a player and a coach a lot, and and I just know that it doesn't it doesn't have a bearing. And you know they could they could uh, it was, as we mentioned already in the first 15 minutes we could see a completely different version of Hull for that first 15 minutes and you know then previous results have very little bearing. This isn't just Bruno's throwing it after this, would that be a, a big loss? I didn't catch what you said, say that again. Your assistant heading out after this game, would that be a, <coughs> a big miss? Well he goes with our best wishes, I, uh, I'm hesitant to say that it's going to be a big loss, he's been a fantastic servant, you know very good coach Chris Plume, uh, but the interesting thing with him is he's still got a, a link with us, he's still going to be doing some stuff with us. He'll still have a high involvement with us between now and the end of the year, 
the reason he's going now is that he uh, the, se- the the school term starts, you know, before the season finishes. So he he wanted permission to leave, and uh, we granted him that permission. He goes with our best wishes, but it isn't that we won't see him again, and it isn't that he won't have an influence over us between now and the end of the year, which which is good because he is a good member of staff. The games always have been held at Doncaster. Would you have liked to have maybe a bigger ground for the, such a big occasion? Uh, I have, that has no bearing on my preparation whatsoever. And can I get your thoughts on uh, the Hull FC and Wigan match getting taken over to Australia? What are your, your views on that? Yeah, uh, listen, I think the what I know of it, and I, I know very little of, of the whys and the wherefores, but what I know of it, I think it's good. Uh, I don't know why they're doing it, uh, but it's positive. I, I think you know to put a to put Super League on show in Australia and you know make more, more people aware of it. Um, and I'm guessing I don't know. I'm guessing it's to do with. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't know why. Uh, I've, I can guess, and I'm not going to guess. So uh, yeah, but I think it's good. I'd, I'd like to see it happen more often. How much bearing does the atmosphere of the Challenge Cup semi-final have actually on the game? Because they're going to have. Pretty much a full house, two sets of very passionate fans. Yeah, I, I think it would. I think, uh, I believe the the atmosphere does, it does. It It can even make teams crack under pressure or bring a team back from obscurity during the game. Uh, again, in, in the in the Challenge Cup, I think the biggest semi-final or the, the most intense semi-final that I was involved with was when I played against Leeds, actually. Sorry to mention that. Uh, it was at the uh, old, what was called the Old McAlpine, and uh, you know it was nearly a sellout there, and you know we'd never had a chance of winning, but and that was the in, in the early years and the emergence of Bradford, and we weren't really any sort of strong team back then, uh, but we beat Leeds. I think that might have been about 1996, and we took a hell of a lot of people there. That I don't, I think we took more people there that actually came to our ground at the time, uh, and I do remember that being a, a significant factor in the win that day. So if uh, if Doncaster's a full house, um, yeah, I should have a, it'll have a bear in there. Great. Brian, obviously you're next to the Challenge Cup there, it's such a special competition, but with so much at stake with Super League nowadays, just how important is winning the Challenge Cup and being at Wembley <coughs> for, for players and yourself? I don't think it's in a, I don't think it's in a, a, I don't think it's either or. I don't think you ever get to a stage where it's either or. I don't think you... I don't think any coach will ease off in the Challenge Cup. I don't think. I know any owner won't. I know every owner and every administrator that runs a club will say we want to get to the Challenge Cup final. Uh, financially, it's very good for the club. But uh, more every year, and you're right. I think the importance and the. Uh, <clears throat> I think the significance of not making a grand final for a big club every year becomes bigger and bigger. You know, for the the bigger of the clubs, and I won't mention them. But the bigger of the clubs in Super League, you know, they've got to get to a grand final to to be regarded as, as having a good season. And if they don't get there, you you start to wonder, well, <clears throat> what were the factors leading into that? And maybe the Challenge Cup has a bearing on it. But I'll tell you internally, I don't think it's either or. Not for us, it's not. We can we can do both, and we can have a huge focus on the Challenge Cup. And you know, we have in the past expended a lot of energy in the Challenge Cup. I remember in 2014, our season fizzled out a little bit. Uh, in no small part down to the fact that we won the Challenge Cup first time in 15 years and all that type of thing. And the anxiety leading into that game, there was a threat of us losing seven Challenge Cup finals on the bounce as a club. We'd already lost six, not on the bounce, but consecutive finals. And I do remember the anxiety building up for that 2014 final. was was It was so high, it was so intense that when we actually won it, it was brilliant. But we crashed. We absolutely crashed and lost our next three games. and. The interesting part about the Challenge Cup, and I think this might have a part to play in what you're asking, is that the Challenge Cup has been moved to autumn, and it used to be in spring. Uh, and in in old money, when we played in winter, it was the back end of the year, but then we moved to summer in 95, 96. So we used to get through the Challenge Cup in spring, it was almost like a, a quarter of the way through the year. And then you could focus on the league, but now, the last two finals we've been involved with, well, all four of them since I've been coach, we played the Challenge Cup final, and literally a couple of weeks later, we, we're heading into playoffs, and it's uh, it is a drain. It's hard, but for me and for us as a club, it's not either or. We don't decide and, and think, well, we're going to ease off on that because we really want to get there. We want to be good enough to do both. With all that in mind, with with the youthful 
the squad and, and as you've touched upon the players leaving next year how important the Wembley appearance would be for the progression of those young players do you think? Yeah, listen, we've done our progression. That's not to say we don't we don't have any more to do, but I think the important part for for our young players was last year and this year. We've been through some some tough times. The Chance Cup finals and in addition to that. Uh, <clears throat> but hopefully in, in two or three years' time the uh the Stevie Wards, the Singletons and the Ash Goldings and people like that will be uh will have another sixty, seventy, eighty games under the belt. And, uh, and our genuine leaders and uh, and will know what to do, will know what to say, they know how to handle tough situations and uh, they know how to handle wins. And, and all, all the baggage of being a, being a senior player, I'll tell you now, 2016 was far more beneficial than maybe getting to the Chance Cup final. I don't want to trivialise the Chance Cup final, it's great and we want to do that. And it will add a couple of uh, strings to their bow. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty cool. Confident that uh, our juniors are, are having a good old, a good old apprenticeship with our team at the moment.